arithmetic sequences is our first lesson. An arithmetic sequence is an ordered list of terms in which the difference between consecutive terms, consecutive terms is this term, then this term, and this one, is constant. In other words, the same value or variable is added to each term to create the next term. The constant is called the difference, constant difference. So here, we go 3 to 7 is how much? 4. Then 7 to 11? 4. Then 11 to 15? 4. Then 15 to 19? Okay. So it would have a common difference of 4. Correct? So if you add the same thing, which you could add a negative, which people don't realize. If, you're, if the numbers are going down, right? If it's like 5, 3, 1, you're adding actually negative 2 to each, right? So it is what you're adding to each. Um, but if it goes up or down by consistent value by adding 2 or adding negative 2, then it is an arithmetic sequence, okay? Arithmetic. Geometric is when you multiply. Arithmetic is when you add. So geometric will grow way faster. Because if you're multiplying by 2, and you start off with 2, be 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, it'll grow really fast, right? It's like exponential growth. But arithmetic just goes up by that certain value, so you grow slowly. Same consistent growth, okay? So this one here is just showing this. So if term 1 is 3, we would have 3 to begin with, and that would be term 1. T sub 1, the little 1 being lower, that means term 1. Then what we're going to do is we have 7, we're going to add 4 to it. So if we take term 1 plus 4, we get T1 plus 4. And if we have T3, it would be 7 plus 4. So we take the first 2 and add 4. So we turn 1 plus 4 plus 4, technically. Which is turn 1 plus 2 times 4. Then this would be turn 1 plus 3 times 4. Then turn 1 4 times 4. So you're literally just adding 4 to each. Correct? And when you do that, you get this lovely little formula here. T1 plus N minus 1B, which is actually the arithmetic sequence formula. Okay? It's... So we're going to write Tn equals T1, and you're going to get a formula sheet with these on it, so you don't have to be memorized, but you do need to know which ones are which. Tn equals T1 plus N minus 1D. Okay? Tn just means any term, general term. It could be term 5. If it's term 5, then it would be T5. If it's term 10, it would be T10, right? So this here is the term you're finding. Or we can call it the general term. And that will make sense in a little bit. We're just going to write these down. The next one is T1. T one. What do you think T one would stand for? Term one. Yeah. So in every formula, when you see a T one, that's just term one. N stands for the number of terms. So if we were finding term 5, I put a 5 in there. If we were finding term 10, I put a 10 in there. If we were finding term 100, I put 100 in there. Right? It's the number of terms you're looking at. And D, what do you think that's going to be? Yeah, the common difference. And how you can always find it D just equals term 2 minus term 1. Basically, it's just one term minus the previous term. So D, I could also do like term 3 minus term 2. That would also get me D. You just take the latter term minus the former term, right? So if I went up to here, I had 3, then 7, then 11, let's say. I had 3. 7, 11, etc. right? If I wanted to find D, I could go, oh, how, what did I do to get to here? What did I add? Or I can just go term 2 minus term 1, so it's 4. Or I could do term 3, which is 11, minus term 2, which is 7, so it's 4, right? I take the, the latter term and minus the former term. 
I could do term 10 minus term 9, right? And I should say it's a new value. So here it says, consider the arithmetic sequence 5, 12, 19, 26. Term 1 would be 5, term 2 would be 12, term 3 would be 19, term 4 would be 26. The common difference is determined by subtracting two consecutive terms. So I could do term 2 minus term 1, right? I could do 12 minus 5, which is 7. Or I could do 19 minus 12, term 3 minus term 2, which is 7. Or I could do term 4, which is 26, minus term 3, which is 19, which is still 7. So I know it's an arithmetic sequence because when I take the second term minus the first, or the third minus the second, or the fourth minus the third, it's all the same value, 7, 7, 7, right? So I know it's an arithmetic sequence. So we have example one. Ah, they have variables. What's happening here? It was easy when it was 357. Why is there variables? Because there is. All right. So, example one, we want to consider the sequence x plus 2, 3x minus 1, 2x plus 1. Determine the value of x such that these form an arithmetic sequence. Okay? If I see arithmetic sequence, that means same. D value. Right? They all have the same D value. The last one was like 7 and then 7 and then 7 and 7. Correct? Now, how do we find the D value? We could do term 2 minus term 1. Correct? Or what else could we do in this one? Term 3 minus term 2. Could I do term 4? Is there a term 4? No. So my only options I have here are term 2 minus term 1 and term 3 minus term 2. Correct? Okay. So let's do that. So D equals term 2 minus term 1. I'm going to write that. Or we could say D equals term 3 minus term 2. I'm going to write that. Do we agree with that statement? Do we agree with those two statements, actually? All right. That's not anything crazy. Correct? We're going to use polynomials from grade 10, though, so we have to remember how to do that because we have binomials up top. Binomials means two terms. So let's just fill in what we do know. So D equals, this is term 1, this is term 2, this is term 3. So we're going to do term 2, which is 3x minus 1, minus term 1, which is x plus 2. And I'm actually wrong right now. Because I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Yeah. Brackets. Brackets. Because right now, am I minusing all of term two? I mean, am I minusing all of term one? No, I'm currently just minusing the x of term one, correct? So whenever you have a minus sign and something more than a monomial, monomial meaning one term, you have to put that in brackets. So here I have two things, correct? The x and the plus two. I need to subtract both of them. If I don't put brackets, I'm just subtracting the x. And is that what I want to do? No, I want to subtract all of term 1. Do you see that? If you're someone who's like, I totally wouldn't have put brackets. These are your notes. So what you would do if it were me and I were you, and I was doing these notes, and I was smart in high school, and I did not highlight things, which I don't think I did. But now, old Chris will know better. I would, if I were the person who would have forgot those brackets, I would put a highlighter. I would highlight the brackets, and I would say, remember, to bracket behind the subtraction sign, correct? If you're someone who's like, yeah, I wouldn't have done those brackets, I would highlight the brackets and say, remember, put these brackets, right? When you have a binomial. Like, you're doing little reminders for yourself because these notes are your studying notes. And we're going to study right from them. So if you do a really good job on your study notes, then you'll remind yourself, correct? And a lot of you, if you're like, no, I wouldn't remember, you wouldn't have. Trust me, I've taught this many times. This is where it goes wrong on this question. People don't bracket that, right? And then they don't distribute. So I would highlight, or I would put blue pen if I'm using pencil. Whatever it would be, I would make a point of showing that I need to add those brackets, right? That's how you make good study habits. I take good notes for yourself. All right. So then we're going to distribute. 
I'll show you that. This is me out the door. And then I write myself a little note that says, remember, the bracket. And I would maybe put, remember some brackets when I'm trying to subtract the binomial, something like that, right? Because you think that'll draw your attention when you go back to those notes? Yeah, and you're like, in a week I'll remember that, and two, you won't. <laughs> You'll forget about it, okay? It's a specific type of question. Okay, so we're going to distribute that minus sign through, which means it changes both things. So we get D equals 3X minus 1 minus X minus 2, and then I can collect like terms. So I'm going to get 3x minus x, which is 2x, and then minus 1 minus 2, which is minus 3. So currently that's what I have d equal to, which isn't like a 4 or a 7 or a 9, which is really nice, but it's still d, right? Now I want you to try the same thing and get d for term 3 minus term 2. So we're going to take 2x plus 1 and we're going to subtract 3x minus 1. Try it out see if you can get your d equal. Okay, so I would go d equals term 3, which is 2x plus 1, minus term 2, which is 3x minus 1, put in bracket, and then distribute d equals 2x plus 1, minus 3x plus 1, plus like terms, 2x minus 3x is negative x, plus 1, plus 1, plus 2. So this would be step one, term two minus term one. This would be step two, term three minus term two. Anyone have any idea how I can actually figure out what x is? What do both of the answers equal? What letter do they both equal? D. Did I find the common difference of both? Okay. Is this a true statement? Is that true? Anyone fight me on that one? No, d equals d, right? That's true. x equals x, d equals d, whatever, right? That's a true statement, isn't it? This is where people get stuck because they don't know what to do. Well, d equals d, doesn't it? Does so this not equal d here? 2x minus 3? Is that true? If I put that into this, 2x minus 3. And then this one equals d, does it not? So can I put it in for the other D? Can I not just set them equal to each other? If they both equal D, are they not equal to each other? If one equals D and the other equals D, do they not just equal each other? Yeah, so I can set them equal. That's the third step. That's one that everyone forgets to do. Because if one of them equals D and the other one equals D, that means they both equal D, correct? Which means they're both the same value, are they not? They just happen to have X in them. So once you set them equal, you can now solve. You need to isolate an x. So you need to move one of the x's. That's your step three. So people will sit here for life and not know what to do. Either move the 2x over here or move the x over here. If you have a variable on both sides, move one of them. I would add the x because I think it's easier math, but I could subtract the 2x. If you're spending more than three seconds deciding which x to move, you waste parts of your life you're not getting back. Just move one of them, okay? So when you have a variable on both sides, take one of the variables and move it with the other one, all right? So I could subtract the 2x over or I could add the x over. I like adding personally, so I'm going to add the x. But you could subtract the 2x and it'll still work, okay? So I'm going to add x. And I get 3x minus 3 equals 2. Then what do I do? Yeah, that's Yes. So I get 3x equals 5, and then I have to divide by 3. So x equals 5 thirds. Was anyone going to guess that right? Not a chance. No one's guessing that right on a test. And I was like, hmm, 
Five thirds. Yes, I think that's probably what it is. I do have two, not seven. So two. Okay. Now they want us to determine the numerical value of the three terms. Now that's easy. We could just plug it in for x, right? Term one is x plus two. Term two is three x minus one. And term three is 2x plus 1. Now that I know what x is, I can just plug in x, correct? So we're going to go 5 over 3 plus 2. And Mr. Clodera hooks me up with my calculator if I can't solve it. So if I want to put in 5 over 3 plus 2, if you have the old calculators, give the TI-83s, the only way your calculator knows something's a fraction is if it's actually in brackets. Okay? If you want your calculator to know that something's a fraction, you put it in brackets, you want to know why? Your calculator does bed mass, no matter what. The only thing you can guarantee that calculator is going to do is bed mass. It's going to do brackets, then exponents, then division, multiplication in that order, addition, subtraction, whichever comes first. Right? That is what your calculator is going to do. So if you put brackets around a fraction, it is going to do that first, which means it's going to hold that as a fraction, correct? So if you have the TI-83s, you're going to type it in as bracket 5 divided by 3 in brackets plus 2. Now 3.6666666, if you give me a rounded decimal, I'll cry. Please don't do that. That is not actually, 3.6 is not this, right? 3.7 is not this. But you can go math as your answer, and it brings it back to the fraction. So it's 11 over 3. That's really tiny. And really large. So term 1 is 11 over 3. If you have the newer calculators, you have a fraction button. You maybe didn't even know you have. So if you have the TI-84s or the color calculators, try it out. See if you have it. So you're going to go like this. You're going to go alpha. The green one. And then you're going to go y equals. And you're going to go enter. And the fraction will pop up. You don't need brackets. So if you have the TI-83s, no matter how much you press alpha y equals enter, it ain't happening. Okay? So don't waste your time. Just put in brackets. If you have the TI-84s, check it out. Do alpha y equals enter. The colored ones like you have, if you try try alpha and then the button beside it, alpha link. Did your fraction pop up? Those are the fast. So if anyone has the color, the one that you charge, I think you're the one. So you can just go alpha. So if you go alpha y equals enter, you can go 5 over 3, and then you don't need as many brackets, plus 2. And they'll come up as a fraction. Okay? Make sense? If you want it to come up as a decimal, you have to put it in brackets. It'll come up as a fraction every single time for you. So sometimes, why would you want it as a decimal? You might want it as a decimal if it's a numeric response question. Right? Everyone have that? Understand it? Can everyone find that button if you can? If the TI-83s and you're still trying, stop. <laughs> Wait, doesn't have it. Okay, let's try this one out. T2 equals 3 times 5 over 3 minus 1. And I can actually do it in math without my calculator. But you can type in your calculator to the answer. But what you also can do is do the actual algebra. 15 over 3 minus 1, and then you can become the denominator. So you get 15 over 3 minus 3 over 3, which is 12 over 3, which is 4. So you can do the algebra too. Or you can type 3 times 5 thirds minus 1 in your calculator. Right? So try it out in your calculator too. 3, I'll bring this back up in a second. 3 times 5 thirds minus 1. So 3, if you have the old calculators, you're going to go times 5 thirds minus 1. Every single time you have a fraction, you will put it in brackets. It's the only way your calculator knows it's a fraction. You have the old ones. So let's do that. Or 3 alpha y equals enter. Oops, sorry. 3 times alpha y equals enter. 5 thirds. 
Okay. And then the last one. Equals two plus five thirds plus one. Ten thirds plus one. Plus thirteen thirds. Oh look, what's this? This section looks very similar. Uh, it has the word trial inside it. What do you think I'm going to make you do? Try it. <laughs> Good question. And they should make sense because when you subtract them, you should get the same common difference, right? So if I went negative 8 minus 20, minus and minus 22, so plus 22, I would get negative 8 plus 22 to 14. And then if I did 6 minus and minus 8, it would be 14. So you can check and see if it makes realistic sense that you actually got the answer. You never have to flip over. So we start off with a harder question, then we get to go to some easier ones, which is nice. Mess up. Yeah. Let me see, you probably just added the wrong thing. Okay. I just didn't have to do that. I just did it to check to see if it happened to you. 
then I could walk away knowing the pain. Makes sense. So when I did, so when we solve, we didn't actually solve for the ego for X, right? So if I put head back and go to ego, I'm going to get to the fourth year, like two or three seconds, that's why I'm talking to the question. Because if I put it in here too, and it's plus four is 14, and I got 14. So I can walk away being like, yep, I'm good, or it's good. Why is the 8 possibly for 6 to see if it's not when you ask? Oh, because you do term 2 minus term 1. Oh, okay. So you're going to go 6, let's be term 3, let's say, 6, and then we put minus, and then we're minusing 8. So oh. we're actually adding. And then the same thing here. It's negative 8, because it's term 2. And then minus, and then turn one. So it's because when you find D, you actually subtract. And minus and minus makes a plus. So that's why the eight stays there. Okay. Good? Okay. Now we go to easier ones. So here, we have to write the first four terms. If I give you T1 and D. D is the common difference. It's what you add to get to the next one, correct? That's all D is. So if I have a term, I can add D to it and get the next term. Will you agree? So sometimes you're adding a negative, which sounds like you're subtracting, but you're just adding a negative. So if your D value, let's keep this in our head, if our D value is positive, our sequence will increase, correct? Because we're going to add to, add to, add to, add for, add for, add for. If our D value is negative, our sequence is actually going to reduce. It's going to decrease because you're adding a negative, adding a negative, adding a negative, which means that you're actually subtracting from it, right? So your, your sequence will go down. We agree? So this one, term one, we already have. Term one is negative five. Now I need the next three. We agree? And D is negative. So are my numbers going to actually get smaller, so more negative? Or are they going to increase? They're going to keep going down, correct? Because it's minus 2. So if I'm at minus 5, I'm expecting the next term to be smaller than that, smaller than that, smaller than that, correct? So term 2 is just negative 5 plus C, so plus negative 2. So what do I get? Negative 7, right? And then term 3 is negative 7 plus C plus negative 2, which is negative 9. And then term 4 is negative 9 plus negative 2, which is negative 11. So I have the answer, right? Is it getting smaller? Yes, more negative means smaller, right? Even though the numbers are getting larger, if they're getting more negative, they're getting smaller. Because negative 11 is less money than negative 9. Right? You can order any money. I want you guys to try B. We're not going to worry about C. Just try B. Return 1 to 10. Return 2 to 2 is 10 plus negative 0 0.5, which means it's subtracting from 5. So it's being 9.5. Term 3 is going to be 9.5 plus negative 0 0.5, which is 9. And term 4 is 9 plus negative 0 0.5, which is 8.5. We are going to skip three and four for now. We will come back to them, I promise. And we'll go to five. So, this one says determine the number of terms in the arithmetic sequence. Important pieces of information here. Determine the number of terms. What variable am I asking you to find? 
there was T1, there was D, there was N, there was TN. Which one represented the number of terms? It starts with the same letter as the number of terms. N. So when they ask for the number of terms, they're asking you to find N. So that we know. So this means the only unknown I can have when we did this in science 10 a lot in the physics unit. Um, and you can only have one unknown. So in that formula, Tn, T1, N, and D, only thing I've been missing is N. So I better find T1, I better find Tn, and I better find D. Correct? So you can only solve for one variable if it's the only one missing. You agree? You learn that in science 10 and physics. All right. Arithmetic sequence tells me, okay, there's only one arithmetic sequence formula. So that's easy. I know I need to use Tn equals T1 plus N minus 1D. That's minus sign from how Right? So this is arithmetic sequence. I have to use that formula. Why? It's the only formula. So I wrote it down. Right? Now I told you you need to have all the rest of the variables. We know they want n. So we're going to put an n here. But then I still have tn, I still have t1, and I still have d. Can you go back to the very first page for a second? The very front page. Come on. So I told you, is the term you're finding, Tn, it's the general term. This is the actual one that everyone forgets about. Tn is also the last term. It's the last term. Because if the term you're finding is T5, then that would be the last term, right? We just don't know if it's T5 or T10 or T7 or T8. We're trying to find N, correct? We're trying to find the number of terms. So Tn can represent the last term. Because this is T20 or T15 or T whatever. We just don't know what it is, right? Because we're looking for N. We agree? So this is Tn. This is the last term. So that's 222. What does T1 represent? Yeah, negative 6. It's the first term. And what's D? The common difference. And how do we find the common difference? Term 2 minus term 1. And then we can check again by doing term 3 minus term 2. Right? I always check D twice to make sure I have the same number for both. So I overachieve. And it's fine. So I go term 2 minus term 1, so I'm going to go negative 3 minus a minus 6. And when I minus a minus 6, I'm actually adding 6, so I get d equal to 3. And then I test it again. I do d equals term 3 minus term 2. So I'm going to do term 3, which is 0, minus... Term 2, which is negative 3. So that's actually 3 as well. Because minus a minus makes a plus. Right? So I check twice, my D is 3. I feel good about myself. I check twice, it's the same number. Right? And sometimes minus a minus thing makes it a little harder. So sometimes term 3 minus term 2 is actually easier to find D than term 2 minus term 1. So we have all the info we need. We know Tn, we know T1, we know D. We don't know N. Okay? So, I'm going to be, I'm going to level up, be level with you here. I'm going to level it up and tell you how it is. Your COVID was during grade 9. Grade 9 is when you learn to isolate variables. Most of you think of that. So that's why chemistry 20 is hard. And that's why science 10 physics unit sometimes is hard. And that's why some of this is hard because you guys miss the whole how the heck do I get a variable by itself piece. So where the struggle is in sequences and series is not in filling in the formula. Most of you can get here. Most of you will fill the formula in right. You can't isolate a variable. If you're like, that's me, and you've come past, you've gotten past the whole like denial and you're totally at acceptance at this point, just come in and I will throw a whole bunch of equations at you and you will have it like that. You will fill that gap really easy. It's an easy gap to fill. 
I just don't have time in class to fill it all the time. So if you want it filled and you're like, yeah, I just think you getting this variable here, come in and I'll give you equations like this and we'll practice them and eventually you'll just find it really easy. Okay? But you need to get to acceptance and tell me because I'm not inside your head and I don't know what you know. Some of you, but isolating variables is not hard at all. Some of you are like, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's fine, right? It's coming in and asking that question if you are that person who doesn't know how to do it. Because if you fill that gap, this unit is easy. People who never filled the gap last year when I was teaching it, they just couldn't. I could see. They filled in the formula perfectly, and then chaos ensued, and never the right answer. They just didn't know what to do next. Okay? So let's fill it in. The formula is Tn equals T1 plus N minus 1B. Tn is 222. T1 is negative 6, plus N minus 1 we don't know, and then D is 3. Now, just in case you didn't know this, isolating a variable. So isolating a variable means I have an N, it's stuck in a whole bunch of crap, I want to get it by itself. That's what isolating a variable means, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff stuck to it right now, and I want N equals something at the end. Yeah? When you're trying to isolate a variable, you do reverse bed mass. So you're actually going to get rid of all the additions and subtractions first. And you're going to get rid of the multiplications and divisions. Then you're going to get rid of the exponents and the brackets. You actually do reverse bed mass when you are isolating variable. When a variable is embedded in something, you want to get it by itself. So I got to do addition and subtraction first. So what do I need to move first? The negative 6, because it's a subtraction of 6, correct? I got to move all my addition and subtraction first. Now some people will say, well, n minus 1 is a subtraction. Actually, what's it in? A bracket. And what's the first thing in bed mass? Brackets. So what's the last thing we're going to do? Brackets. Because we reverse bed mass when we isolate a variable, correct? Don't touch that bracket. That bracket stays for life for a little while. Not like for, for quite some time, right? It's going to take for a few steps. So we're going to do the addition and subtraction. Why it moves on me sometimes, I have no idea. Okay. So we're going to add 6. When we add 6, we get 228 equals n minus 1 times 3. Do I really need the bracket around 3? No. I could just go like this. Times with a dot 3. So I've gotten rid of all the addition subtractions. People are like, there's no subtraction on the end. But it's in brackets. Remember the brackets chop the, chop the subtraction. So now I need to get rid of the multiplications and divisions. So let's be multiplied. 3. So how do I get rid of the multiplication? What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. How do I undo a multiplication? I divide it to get it to go away. Right? I'm like trying to get these all to get to the other side and get off this side. Right? Get away from the right side, get to the left side. That's all I'm trying to do here. So I'm going to divide by three. If you're like left, this is easy. You're an idiot. Why are we going through it so slow? I hope that's what it is. That does not mean to see here for you. Uh, 228 divided by 3 is 76. Is it? 76 equals n minus 1. And you're all like, I don't use long division. I just did long division. So I went 3 into 21 is 7, then I had 18 left, which is 6. Now, the bracket dropped off. Why did the bracket go away? Why could it fly off? It only needed to be there because the 3 was being multiplied by it, right? But the 3 is gone, so now I just have n minus 1. Do I need to? I could leave the brackets there, but there's no point. The brackets are gone. So now what can I do? Two plus one. Do you see how it's easy to undo? Is you just remember bed mass, bed mass, bed mass, bed mass. Reverse bed mass. Something like that. Good. Good time. All right. Add one. N equals 77. Now there's some of you who are like left. You're funny. I'm just going to keep adding on the threes till I can count them all up to see how many times it takes me to get to 222. Good freaking luck. There's 77. You are going to miss one. You're going to, you're, if I see you like write them out, like add threes to each, I'm going to be like, stop the madness. That is way longer. Okay? Formula better. I've seen people do it. You're like, Psh. no, seriously. They're like, can I get an extra piece sheet of paper? And I'm like, for what? And if it's to add threes on, I'm like, stop it. Use the formula. Okay? The next question actually looks more difficult than it is, 
Three and a quarter is what? What is a quarter in a decimal? 0.25. So this is literally just 3.25. Three quarters is Can n ever be a decimal? n is the number of terms. Can you have like 3.5 terms? No. If your n is a decimal, go back, try again, you're wrong. Like, there's no like, and I no, you are. So, if your n is a decimal, you're bad, you're wrong. Okay? Um, so, your homework, I'm just going to put it right here. It's part of the homework again, but I don't even care. We're not going to look at it. We're going to look at it. It's page 16. Numbers 1 and 2, 5 and 11. Now, 11 is like the very first one we did. 5 is like example 5. I have to draw your attention because it's worded here and people get messed up. So, I'm going to show you an example. 5 says, determine the position of the given term to complete the following statement. So, it wants to know A, for example, 170 is the blank term of negative 4, 2, and 8. So they just gave you the last term. They're saying 170 is the what term of negative 4, 2, 8. How they could have asked it is negative 4, 2, 8, dot, 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 170. What is that term, right? Like they're just giving you the last term in a weird way. Okay? So they're just giving you a sequence. Negative 4, 2, 8, dot, 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 170 technically. So it's the exact same as example 5. The so number 5 is like example 5. It's just word of this. Okay? So that's the whole word. We're going to finish up everything just tomorrow. I have time to work on it. I would work. 